On this episode of Carnage, it's time to stop stuffing around and get this done. So you've seen it, you've heard it, and you're still asking questions? Yeah, well, yeah, it's almost done. It is getting very close to done. Uh, we've been waiting for Adam to come back from holidays and, you know, he's had a very well-deserved break, but he is back now. He's asking for the car to come back so they can do waste gates and blow-off valves and intake pipes and stuff like that. And to be honest, I should have the car ready by now, but we've been busy playing with the Lexan as well, so... Plus, it has been a freezing cold for the last couple of weeks here in the workshop and has really affected my motivation and um, work. So I need to uh, hook in, get this done. We need to do brake lines, water lines, uh, some extra wiring stuff. We're still waiting on the tile shaft, but uh, yeah, we are getting pretty close. So let's just hook in and get this done. But I've got to say, it was zero degrees when I left home this morning. It's freezing and it's not much warmer than that in the workshop right now. So yeah, let's get up. I'll get under the rear and we'll be uh, doing the brake lines. Right, so I've already made a start on the brake lines under here. We've got to do our fittings on our calipers. They're already sort of loosely screwed in at the moment. I've started making hard lines up here on top of the diff. I've mounted our little uh, three-way joiner there. And yeah, basically I'm gonna do hard lines coming either side off the top of the diff down to brackets that I've already attached to the top of the uh, four-link mounts. And then we're gonna do soft lines running off to the calipers. But yeah, I've already got one side made up. I'm halfway through the other side. So um, yeah, let's finish that off. So I've already made a start on this side. So I'll show you where that's going. So we'll go in here, over the top. And she screws in like so. So that should clear everything. So I'm gonna go down here, bend up. I've already made some marks there. Bend up and then into this fitting here and that'll be a soft line from there to there. All right, so we'll bend that up. Oh, actually we'll cut it short and then we'll put a fitting on it and then bend it up. So you can get this hard line from any brake place. So we'll just uh, use our little reamer tool on the end there. And then we'll just file the end as well before we put a fitting on there. You're not putting a heavy chamfer there, you're just sort of breaking the edge. Now, importantly, fitting goes on. Go around to zero. Do a light block down, push it back, lock it in place. Operation one, and then operation two. This comes out, it'll be a perfect flare. Now I've just got to make my final bend. So that's going up 90 and then 90. All right. Not maybe more there. 90. I've kind of overbent a little bit, but you can always flex them back a bit. All right, that should be right. Up over the top, finger tight, All right, you down a little bit. That 
じねあら It's not perfect unfortunately but good enough for Scotty So now I've got some of this flexible brake line here. I'm going to cut that to length and then we'll get it crimped back at the brake shop. So I've been using the guys at Hallam Clutch and Brake. Been very easy to work with. So uh, yeah, we'll cut these to size and then we'll go and get them crimped. Snippity doo -dah. that slides in there, and that is pretty much what it's going to be. Okay, hopefully that's enough to do. My front side, I think it will be. Yep, that's gonna be plenty. Okay, that's cool. Okay. So now I need to put a joiner there and then run hard line up to this point here and then a soft line will go from there to there on the diff. So I've bagged the end of the uh, old brake line. I've just got to try and remove this without dumping brake fluid all over myself. Okay. Right. This is going to be fun. Right. So I'm going to have to cut this line and then put a little flare fitting on the end and then put a joiner in there and then make up a new line that goes from here over to towards the diff there. Fun. So this is a pretty tight situation so we need a little baby cutter for this one. So this one not going to fit in there. This one will be just right. It's so cute. There we go. And of course it drips. Instead of bringing Muhammad to the mountain, I'm gonna bring the mountain to Muhammad. See that? Ah, oh, let's put our let's put our fitting on first. How's that? <laughs> Nearly did it. <laughs> Nearly did it. That was a close one. Let's make sure it's the right way around. Okay. Put our dies in there. Make sure they're the right way around. That over. Lock that in. Just loosely tighten that. Seat that. Lock that in. Ah, which one's OP1? I can't even see them. I need to uh, grab my phone. Oh. When you're in a tight situation like this, using your phone can certainly help. Okay, next one. Okay, and that 
I should be right. What a job, eh? There you go. One double flare. And our thing. Beautiful. I'm sure someone makes a much more portable double flaring tool than that, but uh, I certainly like the one that we use because it does the perfect job every time. So on that one we just put this straight joiner and then now we can do a line that goes onto there and then to where we need it to be. Oh yeah, we've got plenty, I think. Yep. Ta-da! forget the fitting. Alright, that one's done. So now we've just got the uh, last bit of soft line. And we'll take them up, get them print crimped, and it'll be job done. Except for bleeding, which is always fun. So, we've got the brake lines pretty much done. And after my first efforts at the hard lines, I decided to go back and do them again. Because brake line is cheap, and they look awesome now. <laughs> So, we've got all our soft lines crimped. I've just got to connect them up to the calipers, then we bleed the brakes, and we'll have four-wheel brakes again. I know, it's going to be amazing. But, uh, yeah, we'll lock all that in, get it done, and I guess we should move on to another part of the list. If I'm looking all sparkly like those pretty boys from the stupid vampire movies, it's because I've been machining stuff. So we're machining up a new bracket to relocate our uh, power steering across a little bit because it uh, has the serpentine belt running very close to the turbo headers and I think uh, heat's going to kill our belts. So we're trying to get it over as far as we can. It means I have to uh, make up a block like that. Uh, the original one oh, looks like that. So I'm trying to recreate something like that, but using alloy. But I went down the aluminium store and the thinnest stuff they had to work with was this. So I've machined something like this down to that so far. It's not perfect yet. Had some issues with uh, things moving in the mill. I borrowed the mill uh, down at uh, Max Performance, but that at the moment should allow us to bolt up the power steering pump. So let's give it a try. I haven't tried it yet, but I am pretty confident it's going to work. So let's bolt it up and see if it does work.
So the, originally this sat quite a fair way over here. So the belt running past this header was like oh, that far away from the header. So now, hopefully, through the power of machining, it is somewhat further over. All right, it is definitely better. Like you could not have fit your finger between there before. It's still close, closer than we would like, but there is certainly a lot more clearance than there was. Matt just suggested we put, make up like a, a heat shield off there or something, but we're gonna get these coated. So hopefully that will help. Anyway. I'm feeling pretty good about that at the moment. At least we have successfully made something that uh, looks like it's going to work. I mean, I made that. Just got to be happy with that. So anyway, uh, now we need to just, I guess, uh, clean it up, make it look a bit pr prettier and not just a big block. And yeah get the rest of it happening. So I can't move it over any further because of the idler. We've just enough room there with the idler and hopefully enough room with the water pump. I'm pretty sure that's all gonna be good, but uh, yeah. It all lines up and everything. Probably not its recommended use, but here we go. Okay, that's one corner gone. Now the other one. Much less chunky. It's actually quite warm, but it doesn't matter because I'm cold. <laughs> right, well, that's what we're going to end up with. I'm just going to do one final cut down at max performance to just uh, clean up this face. We're going to leave this part and this part. That's where the pump bolts to. We're going to leave them alone, but we can go and undercut it a little bit and just clean up this face because those parts are perfect. Alrighty, let's do that. So we're down here at Max Performance at the moment borrowing their little mill. Uh, if it looks messy, it's because I made the mess. Remember, I shaved that block down from this thick to this thick. Yeah, it's got to go somewhere. I've got some clean up to do after this. Anyway, got some cutting fluid here. All right. I am not a machinist, don't judge me. All sparkly. Is it perfect? No. Does it work? Yes. So let's go with that. All right. We'll bite it on and uh, move on to the next item. Well, there we go. 
just like a bought one. Uh, I hate the list. The list sucks. But the list is necessary. We must work the list. We need to get this finished. So our tail shaft has arrived from VPW and RTS. So this is something you can order from VPW. They will get you to fill out a form and they'll get them made up to order using all RTS components. Um, so this one's three and a half inch heavy duty wall, heavy duty center bearing. It is a two piece arrangement. The other half's down there on the floor. So we'll get that in the car shortly. It did show up with the wrong yoke on it, but the differences are so minor uh, yet so important. So we'll talk about that in a sec. Uh, they have already sent out the right yoke. We're going to put that on in a sec. But uh, yeah, it's cool that you can get this stuff through VPW. You just send them the details, fill out their form, and they will send you out a shaft. So uh, let's talk about the yoke situation. Like I said, minor yet important. Right, this is our yoke. It is the RTS U1667. Remember that. Uh, it is forged chrome molly. Good, solid piece. 27 spline. It's your typical yoke you would use in a Power Glide, Turbo 350, Turbo 700, 4L60E, whatever. So, good unit. Problem is that we're using a reed case Power Glide, and that means we have a rollerized rear bearing in the tail housing. So when you slide this up in here, it goes clonk. So if you ease it in there, it only goes in about an inch before it goes clonk. All right, so rollerized rear housing. A standard rear housing has like a bush bearing and they have a little bit more clearance, so that will slide into that. So you need a specific yoke for a rollerized rear housing. So if you're using reed case glide or anything like that, make sure you're using, make sure you're getting the right yoke. So we have the right yoke. So this is the right yoke, 1667N. The N is important. So if we take this over to our transmission, these are in slides in all the way. So the right parts are important. So we'll just get our yoke, put it on our 1350 uni over here, get it in the car. So let's make that happen. Okay, job done, let's get it in the car. So let's start by slotting part B into part A. That's what she said. Oh, come on. <laughs> I can't find the hole, Scotty. No. <laughs> there we go. Whoa. Whoa. Slip straight in. That's what she said. Right. Now for this part in the back end. Push our little cap up. I'll screw that on. Tighten that up. We'll have to grease that later. There's a little grease nipple on the yoke there. So we'll grease that up. 
yeah. We'll get our little RTS cap kit, bolt it to the diff, and that is tail shaft done. It's gonna be awesome. To get our tail shaft bolted up to the center, we're gonna use this RTS girdle kit. So the whole thing uses 1350 U-joints, you know, so they were designed for F-trucks, basically, so heavy duty stuff. And they've been kind of the industry standard for heavy duty tail shaft stuff ever since. So anyway, I'll crack the packet open and we'll get our girdle bits in there. Now that's in, I figure it's a good time to throw some oil in the diff. All right, make sure that's tight. Some mandatory shifter action. Now you can feel these things through the side of the front of the case, which is what Ford intended, but it can be a little bit finicky. Or you can use this feature in the RTS fabricated diffs, which is a fill point at the back right up the top so that makes it nice and easy so we'll put fluid in there until it just starts to dribble out the front hole and uh, yeah that's when we know it'll be full so it's been recommended to us that we use a good mineral oil for these Eaton True Track centers apparently if you use synthetic oils or a semi-synthetic you can destroy them so mineral oil it is here we go pump it up God, this stuff is thick. It slimes me. Ugh, I'm gonna be smelling that all day. Alrighty now, that looks like us. So we'll just lock that up. And we are done. All right, let's throw some oil in this thing. That'll do us six and a half litres. So I'm going to use this stuff just to do its initial fire up and set up and all that sort of stuff. And then when we go on the dyno, we will dump this oil, cut open the filter, have a look, and then we'll put some good stuff in it, like good, you know, like racing 10 or 15. I'll work out what I'm going to put in there. And um, yeah, that's what we'll use for the dyno. So. Always fresh oil and good oil because uh, oil is cheap, engines aren't. Probably should have tightened that up beforehand, but it didn't leak anyway because it has an O-ring on it, which is great. Uh, whoop. <laughs> Uh, I um, put it in park. Fuck! Okay. <sighs> right. Okay, so it's back on its wheels. I think it's time to start talking about some interior stuff and we have some surprises there. So, Brad from Geelong, one of our lovely viewers, showed up yesterday with some parts for us, including a automatic pedal. So we pulled the clutch and brake out from the uh, manual setup. We've got an auto pedal set up in there now. He even climbed under the dash and installed it for me because he knew exactly how it bolted up. So he's done that. He also tracked down one of these bench seat console, uh, console-less 
arrangements for the ute. Now that's only loosely bolted in at the moment. We're going to take it out and bolt it in properly, but that's generally how it's going to sit. So no console, all the stuff there. I've already marked out my holes for my shifter, so the shifter's going to go there. But yeah, how good is that? How nice is that, that he's going to track down all this stuff for us and um, yeah, even helped put it in. So pretty amazing, isn't it? And that's not all. I'll show you what else he brought along. Notice anything different with the Lexan? How about some shiny new headlight protectors? And before you go, that's not that special, think about it for a sec. This is a Toyota Lexan. So Brad was down at his mate's uh, shop the other day. I'll give him a shout out. Jeff's Auto Detailing down there in uh, Geelong. Brad was having to dig around and came across new in the bag a set of headlight protectors for a Toyota Lexan of this model. These have Toyota symbols on them. They were brand new in the bag with attaching hardware. They look fantastic. Remember when it comes to front ends, Lexans are not Commodores. I mean, they have a different arrangement. They certainly come back a lot further here on the uh, indicator, uh, a lot narrower profile along the headlights. So yeah, to find a brand new set of these headlight protectors is pretty amazing. And um, yeah, Brad, thank you. Thank you for uh, digging these out and bringing them to us and also the other stuff for the Ute. You're a champion. Okay, so we are getting there. So from here, I think uh, we put the interior back together, get the seats back in, seat belts, all that stuff. Uh, still have the power steering lines to run to our new pump arrangement and a reservoir and stuff like that. A couple of water lines, but yeah, that's gonna occupy us for the rest of the week. I don't think you need to see any of that stuff, especially the seats going back in and out. You've seen that a couple of times, so yeah. We'll get that done, and then next week it's off to MPW where they're going to do the waste gates, blow off valves, intake pipe, and then I think we'll be getting pretty close to throwing this thing on the dyno. But you're going to see all that on a future episode of Carnage. To attach our tail shaft, we're going to use the RTS little U joint bolt cap. Uh, cop bolt the the cradle girdle. What's the U joint girdle? <laughs> Fucking hell, man! I don't know.